If you guys don't know what the Blackmagic Web Presenter is, I did do a review pretty much trashing it right over here. So you can click on it. It's bit.ly forward slash BM capital W-E-B capital P R-E-S. Okay. So what exactly does the Web Presenter do? Well, what it does is it takes any feed from pretty much any video camera, like even a 4K 60p video camera, and it'll translate it it would be the go-between between the camera and your computer. And what your computer sees is just a little webcam. So what's cool about it is that it's got hardware inside that does all the heavy lifting, so it doesn't put a lot of pressure on your CPU and destroys your stream, right? Because it takes a lot of energy to stream. For example, right now at my computer, my CPU usage is only 30% right now. But if I were to send a professional camera feed directly into a computer, it'd probably be churning out at like way higher CPU usage, like 60, 80, 100% and flicking out on the actual computer and overheating. So that's what it does. It does it very well for the video. But as I reviewed in that link over there, uh, my initial review was pretty scathing because they just released this bad boy. I believe it was announced um, just earlier this year and a lot of things did not work did not, no bueno, no bueno at all. And I did complain because you're paying like 500 bucks US dollars, like that's like a billion dollars in Canada, and they didn't include a power cable. Yeah, they didn't include a USB cable, right? I'm running out of places to slap. And they didn't include like a video cable, right? So it's like, come on, man, 500, 500 dollars? Really, really black magic? That's not very nice of you, right? Hmm. Okay. I mean, the really weird thing too is if you got like the little micro converter like I do, they include the power cable for that. Yeah, that thing costs like $85. So why can't you like include the power cable when it costs $500? Anyways, okay, I digress. But let's take a look at this bad boy. And I should note that I've got the optional Terranex smart panel on the front of this because when it, you buy just the web presenter, there is nothing here. There's just a little hole that you can change some dip switches. I'm not calling you names. It's actually a dip switch inside. And there's a USB thing to upgrade the firmware. And so if you bought a Blackmagic presenter and you need to upgrade your firmware, what you need to do is find an old USB cable, USB 2 cable, mini size, and plug it in and download the firmware and just follow the instructions. And it was really seamless, really easy to do. So no complaints there as far as the update process itself, right? So what and why would you ever want to do this update? Well, they did update uh, one prior to this where they said it gives you better quality video, but I already really liked the quality of the video, so I didn't really see an increase in quality. But this actually adds a lot of the menu items to the front panel that actually work. Because in my original review where I hated the, the thing, none of the buttons worked. And in the review itself, when I pressed the buttons, it actually froze the whole unit live. Yeah, I did the review live because I'm dumb. And I'm still doing this review live because I'm still dumb. So anyways, the church TV network on YouTube just says, I just bought the representative and used it once. Excited to learn more. Oh, awesome. So thanks for being here. So exactly. And so definitely get the update 1.2, definitely. And so do register your item with Blackmagic because Blackmagic is kind of notorious for one, great hardware. Two, releasing it too early, just like they did with this. And then three, Great customer support. So yeah, they did email me telling me the benefits of the update. And so I quickly downloaded the update and tested everything out. And I'm so happy I did because things work the way they should. If you recall, when it first got released, none of the audio would work. There's a microphone jack input, did not work. There's a stereo RCA input, did not work. And so they really flicked out on the audio stuff but what they did when they updated to 1.2, they put one of their more expensive video switchers, audio menus inside. So really nice. Let's switch over and take a peeky peek. So here we go. This is the front panel. Nothing's changed. This is where you plug that thing in. But okay, take a look at this. So now you can see because I've got a better video system. This is the first camera and that's why it's glowing green. 
because I've got this camera that you're watching right now plugged into the SDI input, all right? Now, if I switch to number two, number two goes green, but it'll switch to the other camera, so you can't really see that, so no, okay, anyways. Now, to get into the menus, this is what is new as of version 1.2, that rhymes. This is what is new as of version 1.2. Okay, you hit menu, all right? Or you can just get out here by pressing menu again. Or you can hit audio to quickly get to the audio menus. Or you could hit, let's get out of there again, video to get into the video menus right away. So ta-da, very simple. So that's kind of nice that way. And menu gets you out of the menu as well. So you press it once to get in, you press it once to get out, okay? So if I wanted to, let's say, change the audio settings, I can just hit audio. And then I have to press the set button, which is way down over here. And then once I hit that, I can use my rotary knob on the right side here, scroll down to what I want to change, and you can turn everything on, off, at will, and change the input levels. For example, if I want to change the XLR input level, I'll just hit set, and then I can scroll up to 65. Sorry, I'll whisper now because I'm up at 65 right now. And then I'll go back down to 50 where I was at. And so it's actually really flexible and very accurate and press set and then I can press menu, 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 menu and it goes out. Everything auto saves so even when you turn it off, well there's no off button, but even if you unplugged it and plugged it back in, it would save all your settings, okay? So really cool and I also really like the way they've implemented the audio systems because you've got all these different audio inputs, right? You've got two cameras that you can plug in, so you've got camera one, we've got camera two which you're watching here and what you can do is tell it to auto fade between the two and so whenever you switch cameras not only will it cross fade between the video it'll cross fade the audio so it's a smooth transition all right but most of you like me probably won't use the audio on your cameras because you've already got an audio jack here Ta -da! and right now today I've plugged in my Sony wireless so that I can talk without worrying about where I am okay but it also works with any dynamic microphone it is not phantom powered so you will need to get a dynamic mic or if you wanted you can also use the RCA plugs you can plug any mixer in here as well which is really cool so you can get multiple mics into the Blackmagic and then the Blackmagic just looks like an audio source on your computer Ta -da! okay very nice so what we're gonna do is again take a look at the menu here and there's more to it than just the audio and the video. If you go into the menu here, I can actually scroll through. This is the audio mixer, so you can turn anything on and off in, within the audio mixer. But the most useful for me, after you press set, you can scroll down. You can turn on the SDI input, or you can turn on the XLR or the HDMI. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can also turn on and off the RCA, which is just a stereo input that you can put into this thing. So for example, if you had like a regular mixer, you wanted to mix three or four audio signals together, spit it out into the RCA, that would be actually really nice. So I'm gonna go into the video right now. So it's on auto switching for me right now. Actually, there's one more audio. Okay, let's see here, transitions. This is the other thing. Before, the only transition that we would have is the slow fade between cameras. And now you can do, you can change the length of that fade. The default is 0.5. But let's go in here and change that to the longest setting right now to two going to set that so let's come out of here and now when I switch between different cameras it's going to give a much slower fade between cameras this is a two second fade versus what it was 0.5 before okay let's go back to the menu and I'm going to set press set move that up to one second so you can see what that looks like and so I'm going to come out of here and then I'm just going to press that so this is a one second fade I prefer their default actually which was 0.5 to get there. So I'm going to change that back and then press set and then go back to 0.5. Well, actually, let's go back and take a look at some other ones. So dip goes fades to black. So let's go like, let's show you the 0.5. So as an example, get out of here. So right now, this fades to black and then goes between cameras that way. And if you notice, the audio which is going through the black magic doesn't fade any time that you do this. Prior to this, if you have an older version, the audio would actually be really noisy and it would cut out when you switched cameras, which was really stupid. So they fixed all that, which is great. So let's go back into the menu system and see what else we can do. And I'm just gonna take this, press set, and go back to the mix 0.5, which is the default. Just press set to set that. 
and I can get out of here by pressing menu. So now after factory default. So really simple, and then to get out of the menus, you just press menu until you see the regular screen again. So kudos to Blackmagic for getting the firmware update out in a pretty much timely manner. Um, I mean, we're about, what, three, four months out from when they released it, but they do give a nice warranty. I believe it's a three-year hardware warranty for this baby. And so <clears throat> it is not perfect. And um, let me just take a look at my notes here about what I did not like about it. Aha! One thing is if you're going to compare the preamp for the microphone to, let's say, a dedicated audio thing like the Zoom H5, which is like a little audio recorder, the Zoom H5 has a little bit quieter preamps. And if you went pro, like if you went to Ceremonics or, or not Ceremonics, but even some really nice audio gear, this isn't going to be quite as quiet a preamp. But that being said, you're listening to it right now. And with a good dynamic microphone, it actually sounds really good and it's just really simple. And so you don't need another piece of audio gear. There's just one USB cable coming out of your Blackmagic web presenter going into your computer that does video and audio. That's really easy. That's really simple and simplicity rocks. And honestly, only those who are real audio geeks like me might care that it sounds better if you used a uh, a dedicated audio mixer, all right? The second thing, there's no phantom power. So you couldn't use something like a shotgun mic that needs power or a condenser mic that has better audio quality. And so I wish that um, they would have included phantom power so that we could use a better quality microphone on this unit. Um, you know, that's pretty minor as well. And one thing um, that I did find is that um, the line level into the computer so when you, we, I guess the USB audio level from the Blackmagic web presenter is a little bit quieter digitally than my H5 as well, my Zoom H5. And so you might need to boost the audio um, volume in the actual gain settings here as well. So kind of strange in that way because I thought digital was digital, but and so some other quirks, the audio is out of sync with the video if you're using software like OBS and stuff like that. Um, I am planning to have a uh, PDF optional that you can pay for to set up OBS so that you don't have sync issues and stuff like that, which I've learned the hard way <laughs> through a lot of trial and error. And also, um, the other thing that is kind of strange and I really want on my wish list, this is still only 720p, it's outputting 720p, but that's fine because Facebook, its maximum resolution is still 720p. But I really hope, Black Magic, if you're listening, pretty, pretty please, if you could do an update, that would give us an option to go up to 1080p and maybe in the future 4K, live stream 4K, why not, right? Because right now you're limited to a 720p and even for rebroadcasting later or recording and then replaying, it'd be nice to have a 1080p signal so that we can keep up in the future. So that's about my only wish list there. So let's get to some comments. And so let's take a look here. So Adam, you're back. Pauline, good to have you here. Jeremy and Kelvin. Oh, Kelvin? Is this my Kelvin? I think it is. Good morning, Kelvin. I'm totally geeking out. Totally geeking out. But yeah, um, what else is there to say? If there's any questions, hit me up in the comments or the rebroadcast as well. I know that the YouTube comments disappear. So I'm going to take a quick look over there just in case there's questions. And there is one. The Church TV Network says, I use OBS. What are you using? I use OBS too. And so I have dabbled with the other software, which is for Mac users, Wirecast. But don't find a compelling reason to use it. It's $500 for a piece of software that does not give me much more functionality or prettiness. And so OBS rocks, but it is difficult to set up and it took me literally a month to get it working this well. So yeah, um, but I do have a service to help people set that up as well. And so Adam says, is it possible to live stream via iPhone LTE connection? Oh, definitely. If you're just gonna use your phone, you can live stream anywhere and the iPhone is, is okay. I just, kind of ran into walls because you can't control the white balance or exposure manually on your iPhone. And so I just wanted to get into a more professional looking setup. Yeah. So Adam also says, like live stream the local football game. Oh, I don't know about that. And so you'd have to check into that, but I would not want to live stream the local football game because I'd use up all of my data. That'd be weird. 
cool. But yeah, it might be possible. So in Poland, you might have like unlimited resources for LTE. So yeah, that might actually work. But yeah. So that's it for today. I think we'll close it off there. So pretty quick, nice and easy. And one more thing, I want to thank you guys. And if you like videos that are like this uh, or just shooting the breeze for coffee, uh, please subscribe or consider subscribing. Um, you can also support us or also share the video. We'd love for you to do that. And so thanks for being here, guys. You've got links to everything in the notes as well as you can subscribe. Wait, it's over here. Oh, right over there, you can subscribe as well. So anyways, one more question is from Adam, but I need to connect my D750 to MacBook and then live stream. Well, yeah, because it looks better like this, right? Yeah, take a look at your iPhone and see if you like the quality. Mm. It kind of gets old pretty fast, so this is why I, I do this craziness. <laughs> Where to buy ABS PDF? OBS PDF. I haven't made it yet, but I'm going to. I'm going to put it on LivestreamGeek.com. And so I will make it a priority to make sure that I tell you guys when it is available, and it's going to be available there at livestreamgeek.com. But thank you guys so much for being here. God bless, and I shall see you guys in the next video, guys.